Welcome to Professor Wright. You have a voice. Let's find it. And welcome back to Professor Wright. I am the professor, D.A. Adams. Thank you for joining us for video number 14. We left off last time breaking down the collegian essay into its major components. For this video, we're going to pick up with the thesis statement. Now, before we go any further, I want to take just a moment to acknowledge that a lot of the information that you're going to receive in this video comes indirectly from a textbook called Writing with a Thesis by Sarah and David Squire. The reason why I say indirectly is because I taught out of this textbook for years and a lot of the information that was in it I just absorbed into my own thought processes and so I'm certain that this textbook ha has influenced greatly the information that you're going to receive here. So I just wanted to make sure that I acknowledged that and gave credit to them it's a good textbook. If you can find a copy of it, there's a lot of good information in it for you, even though it's probably not your assigned reading for your composition classes or your whatever writing classes you're in. It is a good textbook and it can help you. All right, so now let's pick up with the thesis statement. I told you before that the thesis is the central idea of your paper, and it's going to serve two primary purposes. The first thing that it's going to do is answer the writing prompt that you've been given. The second thing that it's going to do is provide the major points that you're going to cover in your paper. So let's start off with answering the writing prompt. Let's take a writing prompt that you've been given and let's say it's something like this. Write an essay in which you describe your favorite hobby. Descriptive essays are very common in college. You're going to have quite a few of them as you go through, whether it be in your introductory writing classes, composition and whatnot or all the way up into the higher level classes, your major classes, you will still have to write descriptive essays, say, uh, you know, describe such and such theory or describe such and such process. So uh, descriptive essays are, are one of the more common ones that you will have to write as you go through school. So that's a good prompt to start with. For a descriptive essay, your thesis will have to start out something like, when describing working outdoors, one should consider, going back to the, the example that I gave before, what my paper would be on for my favorite hobby. But notice there that we've answered the writing prompt by saying that we are going to be describing working outdoors. All right, let's move on to a different kind of writing prompt just to give you an example and show you how they can be different. Let's say you've been giving a writing prompt that, that looks something like this. Write an essay in which you persuade someone to try your favorite hobby. Well, now we need to answer that prompt a little bit differently. So our thesis is going to start out something like this. When searching for a new hobby, one should consider working outdoors because. Now, in answering the writing prompt, we had to make it clear that we are going to be trying to persuade somebody into trying our hobby, whatever it is. Once we've answered the writing prompt, now we need to provide the major points that we're going to cover as we go through our essay. Now the first thing I would do is I would go back and glance at my double entry notes, take a look at the information that I came up with there, just to make sure that it's fresh in my head, and then I'm also going to look at the tentative outline or the informal outline that I've put together for this paper. And that's where I'm going to draw from in order to put my thesis statement together. Now, for this particular example, we're going to go back to our descriptive writing prompt. When describing working outdoors, one should consider, and now we're going to add in those major points. When describing working outdoors, one should consider the exercise, weather, end product, and tools used. So now, we've taken this thesis statement, we've answered the writing prompt in the first half, and now we've broken down our major points in the second half and we've kept them in the order that we're going to cover them in the paper itself. Now, that should give you a pretty good idea of the basics of how to put together a thesis statement. Obviously, this is a very simplistic example. It's a very simple paper that we're putting together. As papers get more and more complex, as you move up and have to do harder and harder papers, thesis statements will tend to get a lot more complex as well. But this gives you a good jumping off point to give you an idea of how to sketch out a good strong thesis statement for every paper that you ever have to write. Now I do want to cover a few things on what a thesis statement is not because a lot of times when you're learning how to do something one of the most important things you can learn how to do is to avoid common mistakes. 
So a few things to cover that a thesis statement is not. First, it is not a title. For instance, if you came up with the title for your paper, Working Outdoors, or My Favorite Hobby, that works fine as a title, either one of those. But neither of those is a thesis statement. Because first, neither one of them answers the writing prompt. And second, neither of them provides any of the details that you're going to cover in the paper itself. So those do not work as a thesis statement. They're just titles of the paper. A good thesis statement is also not an announcement. For instance, you might come up with something like, My thoughts on working outdoors. Well, that's a good announcement of what this paper is going to be about, but it's not a thesis statement. Or let's say you came up with, my subject is working outdoors. Again, it's a good announcement, but it's not a thesis statement. Because neither of these answer the writing prompt, and neither of these provide any of the details that you're going to cover in the paper. So these kinds of statements would not work as a thesis statement. A thesis is also not a statement of absolute fact. For instance, if you came up with the line, Working outdoors involves exercise, weather, end product, and tools. Well, that looks like the points that we're going to cover. But this is not a thesis statement because it's missing answering the writing prompt. And typically, a good thesis statement is not a statement of absolute fact. Typically, it follows what's known as the persuasive principle. We'll get into that in a couple of videos when we get to argumentative papers down the road. I don't want to get into it right now because there's just not enough time in this video for that. But typically, a good thesis statement is not a statement of absolute fact. It's something that can be debated, something that can be discussed and argued. So a statement of absolute fact will not usually work as a good thesis statement because, in this particular example, it didn't answer the writing prompt. And that's usually what ends up being the problem with them, is that they do not directly answer because they're just providing that statement of fact. Now, a good thesis statement is going to be focused. Let's, let's look at the thesis statement that we would come up with for the persuasive prompt that we were given. When searching for a new hobby, one should consider working outdoors because of the exercise, weather, end product, and tools that are used. Notice how focused this thesis statement is. The thesis statement only covers what is going to be in this paper. We don't have any tangents whatsoever. The thesis is focused just on what this paper is going to be about. A good thesis is also very specific. You always want to cover the specific things that are going to go in the paper when you write a good strong thesis statement. So take a look at it. The first thing we do here, the paper is supposed to be about persuading somebody to try our favorite hobby. So right up front, very specifically, we announce that this paper is going to be about persuading somebody to try a new hobby. I've also been specific when I say what my favorite hobby is, working outdoors. And then when I provide the major details, the exercise, the weather, the end product, and the tools that are used, I've been specific again because here I've laid out precisely what I'm going to cover in the paper. A good thesis statement is always going to do those two things. It's going to be very focused and it's going to be very specific, as specific as is possible. Now, once you have your thesis statement, it's going to go in your introduction, of course, and that thesis should always appear as either the first or the last sentence of your introduction. Notice I did not say first or last sentence of your first paragraph. Don't lock your mind into thinking that your introduction is always going to be one paragraph long. Yes, on short papers, two, three, four, five pages, yes, most likely your introduction is going to be one paragraph. But when you start getting to some of those longer papers, the 8 to 10 pagers, or the 20 to 30 pagers, or something that's even longer than that, you are going to end up writing longer introductions because you're going to need more background information to get your audience into the points that you want to make. So don't lock yourself into thinking that an introduction is only one paragraph long. But regardless of how long your introduction may or may not be, your thesis statement is always going to be either the very first sentence or the very last sentence of that introduction. Keep that in mind. Now, you can repeat the thesis when you get to the conclusion. But if you do choose to repeat it, make sure that it appears the same as it is in the introduction. And again, keep it as either the first or the last sentence of your conclusion. Now, a good thesis statement is going to serve two primary purposes. And the reason why they're so important. The first purpose is to help you as the writer to stay focused 
and organized on the paper that you're writing. A good strong thesis statement will keep you grounded in what that paper is supposed to cover. The second purpose that a good thesis statement serves is to provide your instructor with a snapshot of your paper so that they will see very clearly that you understood what the assignment was. So those are the two purposes that a good thesis statement will serve. It helps you as the writer to stay focused and organized, and then it provides your instructor with a snapshot of the paper. All right, so that's going to bring us to the end of thesis statements. hope this has been helpful for you. Please come back and join us for video number 15 when we're going to start getting into descriptive essays. And should have a lot of good information there for you to help you get started on writing a descriptive essay. But thank you for joining me this time. I am the professor, D.A. Adams, and I'll see you in the next video.